Hello everyone, this is Noah Pacel. Um, I had a bunch of people ask how I made this um, Blender rendering of basically what was a low resolution version of Vincent van Gogh painting Star Night and how I converted those colors into geometry in Blender. Um, a couple people wanted the blend file, um, so what I'm going to do is quickly put together a video and I'm not going to go into too much depth because every time I try to, I run out of time. Hats off to Andrew Price. I don't know how he does this stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll get right into it, I guess. Um, so this stuff is all done in Python. Uh, you should know that uh, Blender can be well scripted in Python. So I'll put the a link to the Blender 2.71 Blender API, uh, Python API up when I do this. I'm also going to include a link to this uh, small gist, which is um, the Python code that I used, and I'll include a blend file. So don't worry if you can't follow everything. Um, the intention here is just to get you started and maybe asking some different questions later. The first thing you need to know is that you are going to have to start Blender, or it's definitely preferable if you start Blender from a uh, command line. So I use iTerm. If you're a Mac user or a Unix user, Linux user, you can find the path to your Python executable. Um, try to make a shortcut or an alias for it so you don't have to remember it all the time. Um, the reason why you do this is because when your Python script fails or gets stuck in a loop, you can come here to the console and see exactly what's going on. That's where that's where your print statements end up. Um, that's where Python debug messages show up as in your console or your terminal. Um, I don't really know how this works for uh, Windows, but I'm sure it's quite similar. So you, you just need to uh, start uh, Blender from a command line prompt. So um, this will probably be for Mac users where um, their where Blender will be for them. Uh, an applications folder, uh, Blender folder, Blender app. Uh, finally, this Blender executable um, helps if you make an alias for it. So I've done that. So uh, so if I just type Blender on my command line, I open up Blender. Um, we see some debug output here from Blender itself. Um, let's just jump right in. Um, get right, we're going to get rid of our default cube. My script is currently only working with the cycles renderer because um, it uses nodes and generates materials and stuff like that. So get rid of the cube, change the renderer to cycles, um, change our lamp. You, you know, I, in cycles I have a lot of luck just using emission planes. Um, in this case we're going to use a sun. We're going to say use nodes. Um, something like that. <clears throat> so that's all we need to do here in our general setup actually uh, in the default layout. So let's switch over to UV layout because we are going to want to put an image. We're going to have to use some image. So I've, I've got the Blender logo here. We'll use this now. Uh, you can see here the information about this image. Where did it go? The size is 40 by 46 pixels. It takes a long time for whatever reason. My script is pretty inefficient to generate all these cubes, all this geometry from from these image files. So I would definitely start with um, a low res image or, you know, not not too many pixels, please. So you'll see. Um, okay, so that's all you need to do here. Um, in the UV editing view, you, you open your image from the file system, like we just did. We chose Blender. Um, then you copy this, because we're going to need this later, blender.png. That's the name of the image data block we're going to be using in our script. So we'll switch over to the script view. So there is a nice, a really nice scripting layout. Um, I'm going to talk about this, actually, for just one second, because it's pretty cool. First thing, let me just get started, and then I'll describe this plane. So we're going to make a new file, a new text block is what it's called. We can call it whatever we want, but for um, for my taste, I like to call it have a give it a file extension py, just so I know it's a Python script. Um, I like to have this this guy here. The one that says a in blue and b in red. This is syntax highlighting. I like to turn that on, and I like to turn on line numbers. Uh, helps me to debug 
sort of what I'm doing. So now we can just take the PhotoPy file and paste in its content. All right, before, I'm not going to describe this uh, at length. I may do a quick overview while we're rendering or something. Um, but for now, the important thing is <clears throat> we're defining a few methods. These are all just methods that are local to this script. Um, and finally, we call Cubify, which is sort of the main point of entry. And what we pass in is the name of a data block for an image UV. So we just copied one such name. It's sprite.png, so we can just go ahead and paste that in there. Whoops, might as well save our file here. Uh, we'll call it untitled for now. So let's see here. The problem was, excuse me, I pasted that all in twice. So what we want to paste in actually is blender.png, I think. Let's see if that's what it was actually called. Blender PNG. We can actually just do copy from that text field. <clears throat> so go back to scripting, paste it in there. Um, we'll switch to a top-down view. So I, I did number number pad seven to get to the top view. All right, we're ready to run this script. I'm just going to click run. Um, it's going to and everything's going to freeze from it. Before I do that, I just want to show you one thing. This area up here um, is a really neat area, but I cannot select text here, and I'll talk about why that's a bummer, because I can select text down here, I can select text here. All right, let me go ahead and start this script, because it's going to take a while. So when I click Run, <clears throat> I'm going to get the little pinwheel, um, and the script is cooking, and I'll describe the script in a moment. Um, you don't have a whole lot of output, um, but you see here in this Cubify method there's a print statement. But we're not seeing anything. Well, like I said, you have to go over to the terminal. And you can see we're at uh, 26 rows out of 46. So we're about halfway done. OK, now, meanwhile, I want to talk to you about the scripting layout and how I have been able, how I find working with it. The, the main thing that is extremely helpful is that anything you do in these viewports, so in the 3D views, actually anywhere, um, whatever actions you take will show up here in this, this is basically a log and the log actually is Python calls into the Blender Python API so everything I've done here I could script if I could only just copy and paste that code and like I mentioned for whatever reason this this text is not selectable so I can't copy it I think that's a real bummer I think that would that would really change the game on for me um, if I could just take the history of things I've done and paste it right into my editor here. So this here is the editor. Boy, that'd be handy. You can't do that, but you can you can see exactly what you've done and you can uh, copy those values down here by hand. And the other last thing I want to say is <clears throat> over here is an interactive Python console. So while you're noodling around trying to figure out you know, how Python works, um, you can do all that noodling in this, this area. Okay, so um, um, I'm going to quickly wrap up now. Sorry, it's a pretty short video. So the script ran, and we've got all this geometry. Um, right now, we can't. Uh, there's a couple problems. <clears throat> let's. let's um, what I want to do is I'm going to go to the default view here. Talk about it over here. So uh, first of all, I'll go to a front view and a wireframe. Whoop. Excuse me. Um, that's all our geometry. We have our uh, light and our camera there. So I'm going to take our camera, I'm going to take our light, and I'm going to make those so I can't select them. And now I can go ahead and do a box select on on all my geometry, and I can do Control J. That's going to group them. Sorry that my keys aren't on. I still don't know how to do the key casting stuff. All right, so now all that geometry is grouped. Um, we can go ahead and switch to the above view and then let's see what it looks like uh, rendered with its materials so so out of the box pretty interesting we got some nice colors um, uh, basically the way the height comp um, was computed here um, is that we took the I took the uh, combined R plus G plus V pixel value um, and made that be the height so in theory it's the intensity of the color 
um, times some multiplier. I think it was four in this case. All right. Um, so that works. That's all I'm going to tell you. So we, we can see that that works. I'm going to take one second and talk through the script. Um, I think if you're at all familiar with Python, it should be self-evident. As mentioned before, the main method is cubify. And what it does is it looks up, it gets a data block called my image. Um, <clears throat> that image has a property of size, and we can figure out um, and the size is actually a tuple of width and height, so we can iterate through the pixel blocks. Uh, the pic each pixel is, has four colors, so we know that the, and those are of course RGBA values. So we can pack in our colors into a new um, array here, and then hand off that color to a method called draw picks. Now draw picks is something you can play around with. <clears throat> Basically what it does is it um, adds cubes. So it adds cubes at a certain location, and then it resizes them, and then it sets their material. And we, we make a new material for each color, which is why this script is completely slow and terrifying. Um, let me just show you that. So it doesn't matter that most of these colors are the same. This script is super inefficient. I've got all of these colors, most of which are variations on white. I mean, it, there's like thousands, uh, well, at least several, many, many hundreds of them. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, and until um, next time, I'm gonna. I'll have a follow up a, a bit later. Thanks.